So hello and welcome to a new video. So Intel engineers have been working on the ongoing issues and in conjunction with the motherboard manufacturers now discovered that there have been some elevated voltage requests on idle. And they've now launched a new BIOS update, 0x12B. Now this is a beta release and I would like to thank the channel contributor Emir Hulk for bringing this to my attention. So in true next level sim gaming fashion, let's test the beta release do some before and after benchmarks and see how this affects system behavior. So you can decide if you want to update to this bed stage or wait for the full release. So let's show you how we update the BIOS on an Asus Z790 and let's get straight to it. Okay, so welcome back. So if you watch part two of the Asus BIOS settings, you will see that we ended up on synchronizing all cores at 5500 megahertz, and we set an undervolt, and I've been operating my PC like that quite happily ever since. Now with a new BIOS update, it promises to regulate the actual voltage at idle. I did notice that temperatures were creeping up a little bit to idle, so it'd be quite interesting to see if it works. So the benchmark outcome we've got here on R23 is 39122. And then also, as per the other videos as well, we're going to run Time Spy. So you can see we have Time Spy running now. And it's going to be an edited version of Time Spy, so you don't have to sit through the whole thing again. And at the end of this, we'll produce the score. We're going to replicate the same tests. We're going to apply the BIOS update. We're going to show you how to apply the BIOS update on the SS motherboard. And then we're going to compare the results at the end. So just finishing the first benchmark, and you can see that the GPU tests are just running at the moment. And then we'll finally end on the CPU test in a moment. And here we go with the CPU test. So this is the most critical part for this. And you can see that we've ended up on the score of 35401. But one we're interested in is the actual CPU score, which is 26189. Now we can see that the uh, score is excellent, so it'll be interesting to see how the Intel default setting compares. So this is how to apply the latest BIOS update. If you've never done this before, it's relatively easy. So just visit the Asus website, look for your motherboard. Uh, you'll see that my model here is the Tough Gaming Z790. And you'll see that the microcode's been updated again to address an elevated voltage issue during idle or light activity. Now you'll see this is a beta version, you may want to wait for the full version release but obviously I'll give feedback in the description and obviously any issues that I do encounter I'll obviously make sure you're aware of those. So we just click on download to download the actual file. The file will be zipped and then basically once downloaded to your computer you basically unzip the file using the unpacker of your choice. You'll see that it's named here Tough Gaming z790 and if we unpack it and we click on the bios renamer.executable you will then see that it will open this window here and it's now renamed the file to the file name dot cap use a usb flash stick i've used a 32 gigabyte samsung one here which is a good reliable stick and then just simply drag the file onto the root of that usb flash stick Insert the USB flash stick into your PC. And then what we need to do is we need to then reboot into BIOS. And once we're in the BIOS, we need to then load as normal. And we then need to go onto the menu screen, the advanced mode. And then along the top, it would tab across to tool. And you'll see we have the Asus Easy Flash Free Utility. Simply click on that and then we will then see the list of drives displayed. Now it's a 32 gigabyte USB flash stick that I have and you can see that if we scroll down to the top FS8 and then we click on that we'll see the cap file that was renamed by the BIOS renamer. Uh, click on enter and you'll see that it gives you a warning. Just make sure obviously you're aware of your BitLocker recovery key before you do this because it will basically relaunch into BitLocker. Um, once you're confident you've got all that information basically read the file and it will just confirm the BIOS version update which is 1666 and then it will go ahead and update your BIOS. Now this is rapidly accelerated, it takes around 10 minutes or so. Once done it will just uh, advise you that that's been successful and it will reboot. So once we've rebooted back into BIOS again it will come up with this warning screen 
and basically we just need to press F1. It's just saying to press F5 to load the factory default settings, which we're going to do when we're in here. And we're going to reset back to factory defaults. Now make a note of all the settings that you've got in there before you do this. The only thing I'm changing in here before we go back into Windows is I'm just setting the XMP to tweaks and 7200 mega transfers. And then what we're going to then do is we're going to go into fan configuration and set the desired fan curve. So I prefer to use turbo and with the settings as you can see here. And with the AAR, just setting that to auto detect and set at full speed as well. Once we've done that, we just need to click on save changes and reset. And once we're loaded in, we're going to run Cinebench again. This is Cinebench using those Intel default settings. So it'll be interesting to see how it compares. What we're also going to do as well is just display the actual temperatures at the end of each test as well, uh, just to show you the difference between the two. So the outcome of the Cinebench R23 test is So it's 36294, so as you can see, it's dramatically down from the original settings, which obviously we anticipated. Okay, so the temperatures, temperatures are actually quite good. So basically it's about 6 degrees lower, but then the performance is dramatically down. Um, on idle, I monitored it for a while, and I noticed that the idle temperatures tend to be quite good as well. Although I didn't notice anything dramatically different, but then again, the temperatures on my system tend to be quite good anyway. As with everybody, uh, obviously your results may vary depending on your XMP speed, depending on the cooling solutions in your system. I'm using a Corsair 360 AIO IQ and the cooling has been very good, um, certainly no issues. The only thing I have noticed within here, however, is the Intel specifications recommend a uh, maximum vid of up to 1.55 and I noticed it is creeping fairly close to that as well. So what I'm going to show you at the end with our actual undervolts is show you how to lock that down to 1.450, which I find is more than sufficient. So onto the 3D time spy. So once again, this is an edited test, just so you don't have to endure the whole benchmark. So you can see we're on graphics test one at the moment. So, although I'm not going to be staying on the actual Intel default settings for very long, because we are going to be changing that fairly shortly. However, one thing I did notice, which was quite unusual, is a lot of mouse issues. So, just upon the PC loading, I noticed that the mouse tends to be sticking on screen at some point. So, it's certainly something I've never observed before, and it'd be interesting to see if anybody else has the same issue. So, we're on to graphics test 2, and you can see that uh, everything looks pretty much fine, there's no issues with flapping, no issues with stuttering or anything like that, but it was just the erroneous mouse issue that I found quite unusual. So I didn't really have it in these settings long enough to monitor it, but I just thought that was something quite strange at the time. Okay, so finally onto the CPU test, and you can see that the frame rate is already down on the FPS score, and the one we're interested in is the CPU score, so an excellent CPU score will be above 26,000, but the boost is kicking in again, so it's very erratic on the actual CPU scale. You can see the FPS score is down around sort of 15%, uh, which is obviously a concern for gamers. And if we look at the actual CPU uh, frequency graph, you can see it's very erratic, and that can obviously cause stability issues. Okay, in this section, we're going to show you how to undervolt the process. So we're going back into the BIOS. And the first thing we need to then do is we need to basically set ourselves back to factory defaults again. And we do that by pressing F5. So once we've pressed F5, it'll return everything back to defaults. And you'll see we'll be back at the original page again. We need to then search two things using F9. First one is undervolt protection. We need to remove that to enable us to actually apply an undervolt. And the next one we need to search the Intel virtualization technology. We also need to disable that as well. Once we've done that, we can then change our performance preferences to the ASUS Advanced Overclock Profile. And then we need to disable Intel Adaptive Boost. We then need to go into the ASUS Multicore Enhancement Auto and let BIOS optimize. And we need to then set our XMP, which we do in the AI overclock tuner. And here I've set it to 7200 mega transfers on XMP tweet. In ASUS Multi Core Enhancement, leave that to Auto, let BIOS optimize. And 
And then we need to set our synchronization of calls. We do that by syncing all calls in performance call ratio. And in this instance, we're going to set the all call ratio to 55, which is 5500 megahertz. We go to Digi plus VRM, set the load line calibration to level 4, which is recommended for overclock, gives us more headroom. And on the internal CPU power management, what we're going to do is we're going to change the settings here. We're going to set the unlimited ICC max to disabled, which will stop it exceeding the 400 amps we're going to set next. And on the current core limits max, we're going to set that to 400. Moving down, we're going to change the long duration package power limit to 253, and we're going to do the same with the short duration as well. We're going to leave the window times exactly the same. We're going to disable the IACEP, which is current excursion protection. And we're going to change the IAVR voltage limit to 1450. So we're manually going to set the bid limit to 1450. We're going to go to global core SVID voltage and we're going to change that to adaptive mode. This is where we set our underclock. We're going to set a negative offset. And we're going to apply a offset voltage. In this instance, I'm going to use 0 0.0700. However, you would begin at 0 0.0500 and you need to find a safe limit for your system. Once you've done this, set your fan limits again. So we're setting auto detect. We're going to use turbo in this instance, and we're going to then move down and set it to 600 RPM. And then finally, we're going to go onto the AIO pump control. We're going to ensure that's set to auto detect. Once we're happy with that, we're then going to go to the exit menu. We're going to save changes and reset. So I'm just going to slowly go through each of the settings that we've been through here. Just scan down them just so you can have a look at those. And this is just a note of the configuration that we've changed now. So you may want to pause this on the relevant section if you want to take a note of this. But everything we've changed is in here and essentially what we've done is we've applied an undervolt. Now remember with undervolting you need to start at a negative offset of minus 0 0.0500 which is deemed to be pretty much safe for every processor. But you will need to then tweak that to essentially get it to a level where your PC is happy at it. And to do that, you'll need to run some stress testing. I have gone into this in a lot more detail in other videos. So I'm going to link those at the end if you want to just look at those sections and obviously familiarize yourself with that process as well. So once we've applied those changes, we're happy with it. We're going to move on to the final Cinebench R23 test here. And bearing in mind that I do have recording software running on the same PC as well, we've got the Acer server clock settings now applied with the tweaked settings and the XMP set to 7200 mega transfers. And the final score produced is... So it's 39.589. Bear in mind that would normally be over 40,000, but I am running OBS and some other software on the PC at the same time. And also the final temperatures, so you can see that the temperature is still very good. Uh, as I said, the cooling solution on the PC tends to be sufficient with an undervolt especially. There's no real difference between the Intel default settings and the undervolts on this occasion, but bearing in mind the performance on the Intel default was vastly below what we see in terms of the actual undervolt application as well. And you can see we've set a manual VidMax, so the VidMax remains under 1.450 as opposed to the actual Intel default settings which exceeded 1.50. On to the final time spy score now, so you can see we're on graphics test 1. Um, quite a lot of people have asked, is the Intel um, OC settings an actual overclock? Well, simply the answer to that is no, it just essentially allows you to actually set an overclock. Um, it does release some restrictions that the Intel defaults do have. Uh, bear in mind we actually removed undervolt protection and we also removed the um, virtualization technology. Neither of those are going to cause the system problems. Um, all we've essentially done is we've set an overclock, we've kept it relatively mild, it's going to help your temperatures. The main benefit of what we've done is the actual synchronization of calls, so it's going to improve the actual stability factor. Um, as you've probably seen from many of my other videos, um, 
really quite heavily into VR and uh, the, in terms of the application of the um, synchronization of calls and removal of the actual Intel boost, it certainly helps in all aspects of gaming. I've noticed an increase in FPS and increase in stability. Um, I did have some blue screen issues um, initially when I did get the 4900K before I actually applied the relative fixes. Um, now, absolutely nothing whatsoever. Um, there's no issues whatsoever. Temperatures are fantastic. Uh, no issues in terms of any blue screens and certainly no issues in terms of crashes either. So moving on to the final CPU tests, as you can see just here, and you can see that the FPS score is well in excess of 150 at some points and dropping down just to under 100 there. And it gives us a final score of 35,071, which is excellent, but what we're looking at in particular is the actual CPU score, which is above 26,000 still which is fantastic, that's what we're looking at. And if I scroll down just here, you can see that the FPS is once again back up to just under 90 on the CPU score, which is once again fantastic. And if we scroll down further uh, to the uh, temperatures, temperatures are still really, really good, uh, both on the CPU and GPU here. Uh, GPU is not going to be affected by any microcode change, but what we're looking at here is the actual CPU clock frequency. You can see it's absolutely completely stable. There's no flutter, there's no issues there. So in terms of gaming, that extra stability is going to really give you that reassurance. Uh, I've certainly noticed in VR, I had a lot of stuttering actually initially with the 14900K. However, now no issues whatsoever. And then finally, just as mentioned, this is my PCU specifications. Obviously, your results will vary depending on your system. So thank you once again for watching and there are some links in a moment to other videos which I'm sure you will find of help. A huge thank you to all channel supporters and if this video has helped you it would be massively appreciated if you could please leave a like, subscribe and share. Until next time, take care and I'll see you again soon.